Like you cannot even know who is on something or not. Of course, some people you know exactly because mm. they have the, the markers. But some people, if they just eat too much McDonald's every day, train super hard and they creatine, they look like they're on steroids, like they have so water retention and they're... they've. The, exactly the head enough. is like exploding with the water retention. They look like, and they're very massive as well. They look like they actually could be on like some cycle or something, but they're not. So they would be. They should be the really the last thing that you would you would try. But the problem, I think, when I'm thinking about this, is that well, people will, will wonder where is like when does it become the last resort? Like like when is it the point where you should be taken? Like how much do you have to go through? How much do you need to try? This is of course difficult to answer because you can only tell yourself like when do you really need to take this specific drug? All these influencers and marketers they are even promoting, like they are actually getting paid to promote TRT. Let's talk about steroids and performance enhancing drugs. So I think right now we're seeing like a kind of a bit of a division into two camps. And we talk about with someone, for example, we see a lot of people who uh, they think that, okay, all, like you can achieve like this enormous physique, almost completely naturally, for example, and and only like the, the biggest, most like, uh, extreme uh, like bodybuilders who are like this mutant size only those are the guys who are using drugs but if you see other people who are like bulky or something that they could not be using for example steroids so in this one camp like you can achieve everything without the drugs and then the other camp is some something where everyone is using steroids like every single person who has even the tiniest bit of muscle and is ripped or has some a little bit of like 3d deltoid is using drugs so it's like this is kind of a good, good division and, and there's no like, a, like this kind of a middle ground here where people will, would look at this from a, I think from a more balanced perspective and ultimately what I, what I think is here what I want to also talk about is that you know people of is this we're really talking about this people view of the potential of human body like how do we see the potential of the human body what is possible to achieve like this is ultimately what it's about because my belief of what i can achieve or what other people can achieve will then of course change how do i see like what do i need to put into my body do i need like is it needed for you to take supplements and drugs and and steroids or something to get results from your training yeah, I would say like the first camp is like the casuals. They think like almost everyone is drug free. Like they think the rock is natural. They think oh, yeah, yeah. all the <laughs> like the superstars and all these massive monsters. They think yeah, every everyone in the VVE is like natural and all these athletes they admire are at, uh, like natural and stuff like this. And the other camp is like exactly like you said, these people who know more about. They think like I'm I have figured out the right. truth. I know like what is happening behind the scenes and they think everyone who has even any high level of performance or any like a uh, great physique is on something they think like even if it's like a small guy it's just look ripped and muscular he, yeah he's probably on like low th levels of testosterone right it's the low level yeah, yeah and if they're yeah, ripped yeah. They, yeah he probably used like clenbuterol or something like this and yeah. they think every athlete is on steroids like like 99 percent like only those who fail are not on steroids but over the years like because we don't use any stuff we don't use even supplements we don't use creatine we use nothing and because we have been working in the fitness industry for what seven years we have met lots of these people we have like we know lots of these people who, who people who are natural mm -hmm. and people who, who are on steroids and and the truth is that you like you cannot even know who is on something or not of course some people you know exactly because mm -hmm. they have the the markers but some people if they just eat too much mcdonald's every day train super hard and they creatine they look like they're on steroids like they have so water retention and they they the, exactly the head enough. is like exploding with the water retention. They look like, and they're very massive as well. They look like they actually could be on like some cycle or something, but they're not. And likewise, you see some people who look like average and they are, they are on steroids. Because I have actually one, not, not a close friend, but the person I know, 
Mm-hmm. Like he has done many cycles. He has done testosterone, like trem- like the trembolone, all these the strongest steroids you can find. And he also used the clenbuterol to burn body fat. And the guy is smaller than Aero. And he's less ripped than Aero. And he has done many cycles and he has done all this stuff. Of course, he looks good. He looks good. He looks muscular. Yeah. But he looks smaller than Aero. And Aero is on nothing. And he does bodybuilding. Training. Yeah, and he does specifically bodybuilding. So that's why it's very interesting because in reality, there can be some guys who look massive. They look amazing. They look mm-hmm. like they look like they're on steroids, but they're on nothing. And then you have these other guys who use everything almost. They can have, of course, maybe not extreme, but they use lots of stuff and have done lots of cycles and they they look like just an average fit person or fit athlete. And that's actually the case if you look at, like nowadays in the USA, TRT is super popular and it's becoming increasingly popular. And a lot of these people who jump on TRT, they also do like higher dose cycles because there's no negative side effects so much when you're already on some drugs like steroids. Oh. So and these guys they don't even look like bodybuilders. They look like regular guys with a little bit more weight, a little bit more muscle definition, but they look like regular guys. Just on the TRT. Yeah, just on TRT. And even if they have done like a cycle or two. So uh-huh. so yeah, that's yeah. why it's very interesting that that it doesn't actually like I think this camp who believes everything is steroids, everything is this, they don't r- even realize that how it it's not even that impactful and it has to do so much more with the genetics of the person mm. and how well that person is training. Because they these people think that uh, if I just jumped on gear, they would look like the bodybuilder. But in reality, they would not because first, they don't know how to train properly. They don't know how to eat properly and they don't have the genetics for it. Yeah, and I think here is... It's it's really funny that people truly like think or they resort to this steroid kind of like a card like okay if I would take the steroids I would be there but they haven't like researched the training at all I think th- this is like where you mentioned it. here's the big uh, misconception here is that people like option like kind of opt out they kind of give up the all the possibilities that would be there to for example increase your testosterone naturally I think. Because for many people, you know, this this guy is now like recommending the TRT, and and then you find in these videos there's tons of people who are like, oh, I took the TRT like the testosterone replacement therapy, and now I feel so much better, I have so much energy and everything. But none of them like mentions anything about their actual lifestyle, what it used to be. Because of course it can like bring the steroids can bring bring benefits. There's no doubt about that, but. The fact is, like, have you really explored all the other possibilities? Because there's so many things that you can actually affect your health and the muscle building. And in even within your training, like, there's countless of things that you can actually try to change in your life. You know, of course, there's the basic, like, nutrition, but there's also the, the sleep. There's, you know, how you recover. There's your uh, alcohol usage. There's caffeine usage. Are you using some other drugs, like antidepressants or something? Are, and... and you know, you can talk about your stress in general with your stretch management. Are you like uh, staring constantly like some Netflix and social media? Are you like, uh, you know, addicted to porn or something like all of this stuff affect? Do you have deficiencies in vitamins? Most people nowadays usually have some kind of deficiency in the nutrition. Like there's a, have you like ticked off all of these different boxes before you resort to this kind of uh St- like thinking that oh steroids I need to take them you just go to, to to go to the doctor to get this like evaluation like oh yes you have low testosterone so now I give you this medicine this pill and yes. uh, yeah so I'm, I'm thinking like th- the question is like how far are you willing to go before you resort to some kind of drug in the same way in the muscle building like how how far are you willing to go into your in your training methods and explore before you think that okay I reached my limit and no nothing is possible anymore? Uh, that, I think that's a big question. Yes, in it's funny because in because in USA this is the most popular and in England as well and yeah. it has it's spreading all over the world like this whole thing about TRT and stuff like this because the problem is that in USA 
all these influencers and marketers they are even promoting like they're actually getting paid to promote TRT and and the funny thing is that people are like oh, I feel bad I feel depressed mm. then maybe I try this TRT and then yep. of course they will feel better because because their testosterone levels are higher but also they are on drugs basically they are like uh, on a drug that gets released on a steady basis all the time so of <laughs> course it it will get it they will feel better but like you said these people haven't tried most people haven't tried almost anything and if they have they are still have like 10 problems they could tackle with mm. and the thing is that people usually cite the research that when be when men get older their testosterone levels like decrease every year but mm. this is on average and what happens to men on average year after year they get more sedentary every year they got more they get more fat every year and their health also decreases yeah. every year so so that's why it's not even like a good reason to think that just because you're getting older your testo testosterone levels are going down because there are men who are like 50 years old or even 60 years old who have still very healthy and high levels of testosterone but they also have very different lifestyles mm -hmm. and very different different nutrition and diet and everything compared to the guy who hasn't done any exercise for 20 years has is obese has the problems with pornography and mm. caffeine and different drugs so of course yeah, it, and yeah. that's the thing like there's so many uh, drugs like I, I feel like the with the TRT and even the drugs is like the whole medical industry it is, is like kind of the new matrix where people are in a way yeah it's because the it, it's the real matrix yeah because this is where people like they don't see themselves like for me if I face troubles or problems in my life and sometimes even you know I also have maybe I wake up multiple mornings I'm like uh, I'm like a little bit depressed like or something like I don't want to get up or but <laughs> you know what, what I do is I ultimately I get up and I start moving my body because I know that that works but people don't even think that they can do anything like if you feel this way you, you get yourself up do some movement uh, go get some sun if you can you know may, maybe take some some vitamins just in case but you don't like the i think that the drug drug share you know they're like they're the last resort right so they would be they should be the really the last thing that you would you would try but the problem i think when i'm thinking about this is that well people will will wonder where is like when does it become the last resort like like when is it the point where you should be taking like how much do you have to go through how much do you need to try and this is of course difficult to answer because you can only tell yourself like when do you really need to take this specific truck I and think. maybe you should maybe we don't even need it maybe yes yeah at all because mm. like the testosterone was like invented like 1936 and before yeah. that, no one had any problems with testosterone. And, and it wasn't like it was only in this one, some injectable, injectable form in the 1940s. 1940s or 50s or something like Yeah. Yes. And so. like before this stuff was even inven invented, these men were massive. <laughs> if they were in the bodybuilding yeah. or athletics, they were massive and they were massively strong as well and ripped. And they did it without no drugs, no no steroids nothing mm -hmm. so and you can find examples of this like hundreds and hundreds from before that the steroids were even invented so that's that's the actual reality you don't need this stuff like there's no need for this stuff this is all like a modern it's like a modern medicine for the modern prop modern problems and if you eliminate the modern problems you don't need the modern medicine for it because right. it all for works in like ha in hand in hand yeah. you have the problem and then you have the solution but it's the the whole matrix is to is to think that both of these exist but both of these are not even necessary right it's cre it's creating the solo uh, the problem and the solution for <laughs> the yes. problem that itself created but I think it's great that you mentioned these old school bodybuilders. I just want to talk a little bit more about them because that was those were the big inspirations for me and both you. And like I studied, I, I read 
like these articles from Grimek and Reeves and Aferman and Marvin Eder and, and Jack Dellinger and all the guys from like bronze era to silver era. And we can like for sure, because I researched a little bit and there's also some good channels in YouTube that, you know, make videos about this uh, old time bodybuilders and when, when did the drugs actually came to the picture and it seems that you know at somewhere around 19 after 1950s it started but it still wasn't even like big usage from them but if we look at the physics before 1950s we can be almost like 100 almost like let's say 100 percent sure that these guys were not using anything and especially if you look at physics from 19 like 30s 1940s or something like this this period is you can be like very certain that these are great examples of what you can achieve without any kinds of uh, this kind of hormonal additions into your body and if you look and the crazy thing is like you said there's hundreds of examples hundred maybe thousands yeah not like genetics freaks they are not even genetics freaks they're like a just some random guy from a farm or something like this yeah and because i only knew like the biggest names of these bodybuilders from that time but since then like for example instagram has a great um there's a great uh, account which I think was Barbell Films or something, and I, there's also other accounts uh, that I follow that, and and they constantly post post like new guys from the very early 1900s who look stunning, and I've never heard of these guys. No one has ever heard of these guys, and these guys were not even all all like pure See, bodybuilders. Yeah, or serious guys. There was yeah. as you know, in the maybe some strongman. Yeah, there were strongmen or gymnast, hand balancers, like ac- some acrobats. Uh, wrestlers, a lot of guys were <laughs> wrestlers. Yeah, like the Hack and Smith was yeah. like jacked dude <laughs> yep. in the early 1900s. Yep, yeah. yep. And, and, but that's the thing, like Hack and Smith, for example, he was like this absolute like tank, like unit. And, and you would think like, oh, well, that's, that's crazy. But then you also see other guys who are not as big as, for example, Hack and Smith, but they still look amazing. So you actually see multiple different body types, some skinnier, some bulkier, some taller, some whatever shorter and they all had uh, or were capable of developing such a like stunning physiques that actually looked so strong like and I what I really admire in these guys is the frame like it's the frame is something that you don't see in bodybuilders nowadays and it's hard to even explain but they have this <laughs> like a certain solidness and hardness to their physique that I just don't you very rarely encounter nowadays yeah and incredible grip strength and forearm mm. strength and functional strength like they could like lift cars and bend iron bars and do yeah. all this stuff almost no one no bodybuilder today can do because bodybuilders today they their hands are weak because they are always using the the wrist straps and That's the yeah. weight we, weight belts and knee straps and mm-hmm. bow lifting suits and like this like they cannot even do anything functional anymore mm. yeah and like what i just recommend people to like if if you're like uncertain you think that you know, this, some of the physics are not possible to achieve, or you're, you're just uncertain what can be achieved, you know, and if you need outside confirmation for that, like, I really suggest you study uh, bronze era, early silver era bodybuilders, and look at their physics, and, and just search these photos, and search these pictures, and, and like, see what, what they were able to achieve, because I think that's just a, it's a, it's a very good examples of these physics that I, I look up to, and something that I can't even relate to, you know, because I do still like admire like great physics, and I really admire this this physics that they built that still had great strength and even functionality. And a lot of these guys they lived a very actually like a long life, long life. So they lived like 80, 90 years old. Maybe. Yeah, they don't die like 40 years old like Rich Piana or these other guys. Yep. Because and these bodybuilders they die mm. sometimes very young or they get like very bad health, pro- health heart problems later at the, in their yeah. life. Yeah, and I think even the TRT, like the small doses, I think it has some some risk. Like it's not just like, oh, well, you feel good and now you have testosterone. But yeah, because naturally, like when you wake up, your testosterone gets naturally released in your body. Mm. And then throughout the day, it like goes down and down and down. And that's because... When the day is over, you can rest and relax yeah. and recover. When your testosterone le- levels are actually lower, yep. because testosterone is it's it gives energy. Like of course, that's why people <laughs> use it. It gives you energy, yeah. and if you are already on this like top level 
the body, I don't think it's going to recover probably. Yeah, same. I in in of yeah. course maybe in mus in terms of muscle it's going to recover mm. faster. But how about the rest of the body? True, because you have to realize that this is this is not natural way that your body should be. Like it's very normal that you sometimes have lower testosterone. You should have like, but if you artificially put it, you constantly have. Uh, yeah, if you're sick, yeah. maybe and your testosterone will plummet, and maybe mm-hmm. that's the reason. Yeah, yeah. Like because your body has to heal and recover. Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. even having low testosterone, it's I think it's necessary in some in some cases. And and like women have low testosterone, but they don't lack always motivation. So I don't think you can like I think people sometimes fixate too much on the testosterone in general. Like, oh, I, I need to optimize, I need to get it higher and higher and higher and upper. Like I don't really think about testosterone. If yes, I can sometimes feel like sluggish or I don't have energy or but so what? Like I know. If I keep on living and I keep on trying to search better ways of living and, and doing things, you know, and some and sometimes I don't need to do anything. Like it just sometimes temporarily you're here and then you're here because that, that's life. Like that's how it's supposed to uh, supposed to go. Like recovery, again, strength, you know, on and off. Yeah. Yeah. The thing here is that like you don't really need it. Like yeah. no one ever needed it before like this age. Like it was never needed. It, it's only like a modern solution to the modern problem. But how, like people, like you said, people give up too fast and too easily. Like they have trained three years and they think, and that's the problem because people think they are very smart. Like people mm. usually think that I'm doing the right thing and like this. So lots of people, they train three years and after they think, okay, my results slow down, I, I'm not getting any good results anymore. Yeah. And it must be because of the genetic limit or like this. But in reality, it's like they have gone maybe 25% of their limit. Mm-hmm. But they st- think because they are not getting results anymore, they hit plateau. But it's only because their training is not at the level it should be. But they, yeah. Because people do what they understand and it's hard to understand and comprehend the fact that whatever you, you are doing right now, there's like 10 times higher person this is exactly. with better results. But be, it's but you cannot see it because you cannot know it because that's why you are not doing it because you don't understand it and you are not doing it. But But that's what I want to say is that whatever you are doing right now, there's a higher version, a higher, higher level you can reach mm-hmm. and which will produce the higher results and the better everything. Yep. And and talking about like this last resort, I, I was one or I want to talk about this very good example, like, you know, of people not making excuses and, and not thinking, okay, I need to have a drug or testosterone. And this is from the very early bodybuilder, like Max Sick. And this also guy I looked up to because he essentially came up with the muscle control, like really like a father of like a mind muscle connection. and like voluntarily controlling all of your muscles, being able to also relax them. And and this guy became to be like one of the strongest guys of his time or even like all times in, in some ways, like amazingly strong guy who developed primarily his muscles in the first place without any weights, just by doing his muscle control system, at least that's how he says it. But so what me, most people don't understand is that this guy, uh, he started uh, uh, or as a kid, as a young child, he was very sick his name's Max Sick also, <laughs> but <laughs> the guy was like sick beyond like belief. Had like the every doctor and everyone said that he wouldn't like live long. He would maybe die at the age of five, and he had like lung disease, bone disease, and and he learned to walk at the age of six or something. So like super weak guy. His parents, everyone telling he's gonna die, and then <laughs> you know he went to school and he sees the other kids are playing at the yard, and he was just like I'm, I can imagine he's just like they're like wow, they, they have so much energy, like they, the other kids are playing and, and they are, you know, bigger than him. And he's just like this skinny, frail, sick child. But he, he sees this example and thinks like, this is possible, like I can actually achieve this. This is what he believes. And so he starts like this, he's like a own uh, uh, thing, like he wants to try to, to, to like lift weight. So he gets like some kind of stone that he starts to try to make into a dumbbell. 
but his parents know this this and they just break him because the doctor said that it's bad for him to lift weights they also he also wanted to eat better and eat more but they say that he can't eat so everything is like against this guy and <laughs> he's like the sickest person in the world like with bone lung disease background everything right and then he he like goes to he he sells everything he has in order to get a ticket into a circus where again his parents wouldn't buy the the ticket there he sees the stronger performers in the circus and this is like the final thing he's just like he's so inspired by the strength and capabilities that he sees from the people around him and the strongman that he has to start to somehow develop his body but he has no access to weights or anything so he developed his own system of this you know muscular control without any weights just contracting his muscles and developing his body but the point in the story is like think about this guy and where he come from and then think about how much did he think that, well, he can't, uh, like, he couldn't make improvements. Like, he kept his kind of willpower and motivation and, and inspiration always there. Like, he always believed and had this hope that the, he can, like, make something out of himself. Now we have people who are, like, completely fine, who, have, who don't have any sickness, real sickness or, or, or this kind of uh, background. They don't even have parents telling that they can't train. But then these people are like, well... I don't want to even try. I don't want to even change anything. But when I look at the story of like Maxik, I'm like, this guy literally had all the excuses to like die pretty much. <laughs> yes. But he decided to like, with, without, with, like this is the determination that I can like really go behind because even in my in myself and in my cases and in other podcasts, we maybe talk about if I had an issue with my body and I've had multiple issues sometimes in the past, especially with, like with some pains or I had some skin issues or digestive issues. I'm always like, or if I get sick or something, I'm looking at like, what can I do to make this better? I don't make up excuses or go to find the reason from the doctor or something like this. I'm, I'll, I try to like search, what can I do? Like before, because the last resort, like we talk in the on drugs is the last resort, is I really believe that you don't, like you said, you do never need to do this. You know, you don't need to like, and if it, if I do need, if it would come, then I would recognize it. I think I would recognize the point if I need to take some drug. But before that moment comes, I will believe with all my power that there's a lot of things that I can actually do to improve myself before any, before ever resorting to any kind of external drug therapy or something like this. And there are actually many examples of today who are natural as well, like we are natural. And mm. also lots of these vegan guys or vegan girls and uh, not vegan guys, of course. <laughs> But we like vegans and all these hippies and all this more in the like, not so much in the the modern day of life. They are all natural and some of them look huge and ripped and very good as well, very healthy. Mm. And and if you are like uh, in the calisthenics or bodybuilding and you are not getting good results, it's most likely not because of the you are lacking some chemical aid. But it's mm. because first you are not training as well as you think you are. And the second is you are not eating. Your lifestyle factors are not dialed in as well as you think you are. Maybe you have some pornography addiction, which is ruining your testosterone and dopamine mm. levels. So maybe you are drinking too much coffee because it's your caffeine levels are like raising your cortisol and cortisol is impacting your testosterone and so on. So maybe it's your lifestyle and diet that is messing everything up. Or third, maybe your gene genetics has suck. And even if you use steroids, you will st still suck. So <laughs> so what that, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. and yeah. that in that case you should just accept that maybe it's better like I think everyone can look amazing. Everyone mm. can look muscular and defined. But whether you will grow to look like Steve Reeves, yep. who was like a massive bodybuilder in the 1940s, then it, it's more ab about these three things and genetics. But I think even without, it, like, actually, I think people who don't use drugs, who don't use medicine, who don't use supplements, they look much better than the people who do. Because if you look at even like, I don't think vegan, like veganism is like the perfect diet, but these people look super healthy, who are like really into like raw vegan diets. Like the skin is amazing, the hair looks good there. Everything is pretty good. 
of course they don't look like wrestlers or because they are not doing that type of training and they just mean that they look good as they are like yeah yeah because and they're they, healthy yeah uh, yeah yeah they so the really is just focus on the three things like the training getting into the highest level you can nutrition lifestyle and also considering like who you are like it's not there's no point trying to be someone who you are not trying to mimic some other guy who has like mm. such different strengths than you do and yeah. different weaknesses as well yeah i think that's always our bigger bigger biggest point is that you learn to appreciate yourself and your own strengths like it's, it's sometimes it's difficult yeah because you think like you're not enough and you know these these other guys are so bigger and of course coming or being in this fitness industry myself you know you I, of course i've compared myself to also people and but but this is that this is the problem that people people have this compulsion to th- to find out is this guy natural or not is this guy natural or not like what does it even matter in in, in the end really yeah that's like, actually super <laughs> big trend and super popular right now yep yeah, because i i think like i really don't anymore i i went through this phase actually i did at some point i was like because i was also in the early i was naive and i was a casual at some point in my training career and i was I was just wondering, like, hey, wait, wait, like, what, what can I even do with my body? Like, can I build these muscles or what? But, like, you just have to figure it out through your own life. It's, it's really this, this, I don't know where this fear ultimately comes from, but, like, the fact that someone is natural or not, it doesn't change what you can actually achieve, in a way, in the end, anyway. Like, even, like, somebody said that if you have certain genetics, even if you use drugs, it's probably not going to make that big of an impact, necessarily. And you have to also always consider and ponder about the neg- negative effects. And what I see with some people, and we talk about this sometimes, you know, there are people who they start to use drugs, and then in the beginning, like, they, are, they look amazing, right? They, they're, they, they get this boost, like, they get bigger and they just look even healthier. But then as years go on and on, the drugs make much less of an impact and you start to see all the negative things just accumulate so so even even in there like it's it's tempting like you get like a quick boost into your muscle mass but yeah. then it, it like the the benefits start to stop and you need to be using more and more and more and overall just you know there's it's how to say it's gonna be there's gonna be kind of a snare at the end yes exactly like it's how it's going to end is not good because mm. like you said we have seen it time and time again with athletes and with bodybuilders like when the, and it's, this is actually the gay the case with any drug even like if you start using meth or something like this <laughs> you will feel better you will have more energy and you won't have any side effects or you will maybe have but you don't really feel the ne- negative effects in the beginning yeah. you are just like you, who you are right now, but just with more energy, more focus, and with more everything. But keep using meth for one year, two years, ten years, then you will look like the pictures you see <laughs> online. And the same goes with steroids. Like these people, when they start using, you you can see like there's a ra- ra- radiating with power and health. Yeah, that's a good way and to it, say it. And and it's because they are getting some extra without the negative effects, at least not the really bad ones. Maybe they get some acne, but not the real bad ones. Mm. But if you look at, like, because I've been following, like, different fitness guys and bodybuilders for 10 years, and I know some people, and in the beginning they look great, and year after year their skin starts to get worse. They're, like... Maybe the muscles grow, but it doesn't look good, and their performance also starts to suffer. And like you said, these people are forced to use more and more just to like ma- to, just to maintain the levels. And this mm. is the case with any drug. Like you cannot use the same amount of caffeine without losing the effects eventually. Like if you use any drug, you have to increase the dose all the time in order to keep m- to maintain the results yeah. you get from the drug but to also increase the results so that's why i would say this whole thing about s- steroids and trt is very dangerous like rhetoric for especially how popular is it in usa because it's going to cause problems but it's not going to it you will feel better and amazing because you're on drugs in the first mm-hmm. 
one month in the first one year, but after that you will redo, you will return to your to the same place where you started, but it will be worse mm -hmm. because you start to stack up all these negative effects on yourself. Yeah, again, it's like also it's just like a, a crutch. Like you you take you know a stick and you walk always with the stick. Like and and, yes. and then also like I don't just I don't like that idea in general. Like I don't want to have that. You know, you never know. What happens? What if you, you no longer can get this testosterone anyway? Like it's it yeah, like apocalypse <laughs> comes, and <laughs> yeah, then, then always, you are like, yeah. or you go to prison or jail for some whatever. Yeah, you know, know. two months in jail and you have like no testosterone for. Yeah, this is because my my father worked as a doctor actually in jail. Like kind of a side story. He tells about these guys who come in there. They're just huge, and then because they be using like <laughs> a okay. amount of drugs, and they get really bad problems. I mean, they get the gynecomastia they get oh. like de they're like depressed and they get the acne because they suddenly it's cut off completely from the from the steroids and like these guys just they suffer there like a lot yes. but yeah it's it's just like a like you need to always consider you know it's it's because like you said it's dangerous because people are promoting it and often they're not bringing the really the the negative side effects even they're not even talking about it they're not even like really mentioning properly what what can be the negative. Yeah, but it's because they this. think that even the low doses are like fine. Yeah, yeah. But I've got to finish with the thing that, like, for example, Aero is an athlete at the highest levels, and we also train with like professional athletes and mm. and other like mi mixed martial artists and Muay Thai fighters and everyone else. And we are not seeing any, like it's like it's all about skill. If you are mm. losing, it's all about skill or lack of like conditioning, which is all about training. Yeah. But we are not losing because of strength. We are not losing because of any of these things. Like when it comes to strength, we are the strongest guys. And we, we wrestle with and train with some guys who and have done in the past who have clearly done something but they don't mm -hmm. it's mostly like a it's not yeah because all these other things matter way more like this thing is not like a magic like a pill that is going to make you a superior athlete superior bodybuilder superior anything like all these other things we explained before like the training lifestyle nutrition and how well you are in tune with your body they just make 10 times more like yeah. uh, mean like they just matter 10 times more than all this magic pill stuff yeah that's the problem that it feels like a magic pill because you never did any thing to really improve your life so the it makes such a massive difference like even if you or i took trt or something it probably be like you wouldn't even feel maybe like I can't y say yes. that, but I would expect because I think the people will feel it's a magic pill because they were in such a bad condition but if they had improved their condition before it and some people I, I also read like they're like oh uh, I start to do TRT but I also uh, cut my alcohol and sugar and everything and now I feel good well yeah yeah well why didn't you just and cut the alcohol and the sugar like it, yeah and I, I did try to see like how far you can get with that and actually uh, the interesting thing is that like John Grimek, he was natural and super massive all of his life, the yeah. most of his life. But in the later parts of his career, he was he used TRT or the testosterone. Yeah, in, I think 1950s. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. like this. And he said it didn't even work. And he <laughs> said he didn't even like it. <laughs> yeah, he said. But he was massive before that. <laughs> he was. And, yeah, yes. and massive before it was even became popular or even available. Mm -hmm. But. W w once he actually used he was like ah, this does nothing this is useless stuff <laughs> because he point. was already like at his peak that's a good point yeah because yeah that's also great because yeah there was some guys who even tried and they were curious about it but it's yeah he didn't like the way it made him feel and no wonder like you know that's the other thing of people don't even recognize the negative effects in their bodies usually if you use something uh, you, you, like we would notice the negative effects probably if we start to use something now you would be like yeah like what? What is this? Like you don't even like it necessarily. That's also the other thing. Stay, stay natty. Yeah, stay friends. natty and don't use drugs. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's S stay in school. Stay natty, and don't use drugs. And stay strong. And stay strong. <laughs>